Oh, Marcus, uh, obviously, congratulations on the win, but I have to ask, you know, we saw you walking here on crutches, and usually uh, when you fight Jonathan Martinez, you, your legs are pretty beat up after, so I guess physically, how are you feeling after that? Physically, I still feel pretty good, you know. Obviously, the leg is a little bit beat up. Man, that guy kicks like a horse. I think he is a horse, half, half horse, man, I swear. You see those thighs on that guy, man? Oh, man, super impressive. But, yeah, I feel pretty good, you know. Honestly, I think it's just uh, – Got kicked in the leg. That's about it, you know, so. You think you'll feel the same way when the adrenaline wears off? No. <laughs> we'll see. Let's see how the next couple of days feel. But honestly, I feel like it's actually pretty good. And uh, he just landed. He Really, one thing is he's really accurate where he landed at. It was the same spot twice. And I was like, gosh, man, I'm pretty good about taking that thing away. And you still found it, man. Lucky enough, I kept finding that right hand. So it ended up paying off. I think it deterred him. And I think like there were moments that like you were you physically reacted to it. like you were you were limping a bit even back to the corner and then that third round he kind of shot in and tried to wrestle. Were you surprised at kind of the the change in approach that he took in that final round? Yeah, I, did. I was surprised that he tried to wrestle me then. I thought he would have wrestled me earlier. You know, we we thought he was going to try to wrestle, have a more wrestle heavy. Uh, I knew he was going to try to that left kick. I mean, that's his thing, you know. And obviously, uh, if you look at a lot of his boxing, he's had trouble struggling with guys that can throw hands, you know. And he was having a hard time with my jab. Uh, my left hand and my my boxing, you know, but he throws that he just whips that kick so hard and he lands it pretty accurate, you know. Um, I think his legs gonna be a little beat up too though, because I definitely kicked his a couple times too. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I was surprised that he decided to do it when he did because I figured he was just gonna like a dog on a bone go after that. But I landed that good right hand and busted his nose wide open. He was bleeding all over my hand. I was like, oh, that's why he shot in. I get it, you know. That nose is hurt, you know. Obviously, it was it was a hyper competitive fight. Like he had moments and you had moments. But you know, you were up two zero on both on all the judges' scorecards going to that final round. Did did you feel you were up two zero, or is your corner ones that they, they keep it? They kind of keep the you know like in measure. Like you might be up two zero, but we're not gonna assume it's that. You know, I never think about that honestly. And I, don't get me wrong, like I I felt like I was winning the fight, you know. But I wasn't really thinking about whether or not I was winning the fight. I was just trying to stay in the fight. That was my biggest thing. Like, my focus is always just being focused on being right where my feet are. You know what I'm saying? Like, right where my feet are, um, not not looking at the outcomes, not focused on those things. Because so many outside forces always look at that. And honestly, all the work that I've put in for this last year to be focused on this 15-minute outcome, it just breaks my heart, you know what I'm saying? Win, lose, draw, it's like this moment's already over. It happened and it's done now, you know, and now it's on to the next thing. So, um, yeah, my focus wasn't necessarily on the fact that I was up or not. I was just like, hey, man, I'm trying to get him out of here in this third, you know. I really wanted to get the finish. I like getting finishes. That's what I wanted to do. But, uh, uh, man, Jonathan Martinez is as tough as they come. Now, it's obviously 4-0 UFC. Uh, I'm sure, like, no one expects to lose when they when they make their UFC debut. But is this where you thought you'd be at, like – you, know, you beat a guy who fought Jose Aldo. He fought Cub Swanson. Like he was at one point the guy that might be a future champion, and you're now four zero, and you just beat him in Madison Square Garden of all places. So is this where you thought you'd be? Absolutely not. I give all the glory, and I'll say it loud as I can to God, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I I couldn't have written this story for myself. I never believed in myself to be this way. Um, he has instilled a, a will and a strength inside of me that I never knew I even had. You know, um, and that's where my focus is. I stay focused on that, and he just keeps delivering, keeps delivering, keeps putting me in places that I never believed in. My manager said that he thought I'd be in the top 15 by the end of the year, and I didn't even fight. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to be there. I was like, you know, I'm not rushing, but I don't know if I'm going to be there. And now here we are fighting and beating a guy who's in the top 15 and one that we respect so much, one that's fought guys that are the top echelon guys. So, man, God is so good. And the answer, I guess, is no. I wouldn't have been able to write this story, so. So what do you want next? Uh, are there at this point, like you said, you know, top fifteen, you can start looking at specific names, like yeah, see, see the number next to you. I I want to fight now, fourteen, thirteen, or are you just gonna keep coming and accepting the names that they present in front of you? You know, I think looking at the names that they present me is gonna be what the is what I'm looking for. But you know, there's obviously different names that I think are gonna make sense. I would I wouldn't be surprised if they gave me Josie Aldo. I feel like that's a fight that they would give me. My my partner just fought him and he just lost to him and i just come off a win of a guy he beat we're both right there next to each other in the rankings uh he's a little bit older i'm a little bit older i can i wouldn't imagine i wouldn't doubt that that'd be a fight that they make but you know there's so many other fights out there to make um so i'll just listen to what the ufc says I, they've done a good job of matching me up thus far um and and I, whatever fight it's going to be i know it's going to be exciting uh especially I knew taking the fight against Jonathan that now, after a fight like this, I was only going to get tougher fights. So that was part of the plan as well. So now we're going to be keeping on stepping up to the next tough 
uh, opportunity. So, would you go to Brazil to fight Aldo? No, <laughs> I don't want to go to Brazil to fight anybody. Yo, I don't want to. I'm sorry. Like, you know, there's some people that are like, yo, I want to go travel in this center. Not me. Not me, man. I don't want to go travel over to Brazil and fight over there. Like, I love Brazilians. That's all good and gravy. But man, I'm not trying to do all that. So, what are the places you do want to fight that you have? Japan. I will say that I just love. I just love the Japanese culture. You know, so I would love to go to Japan. But yeah, that's about as that's about as deep as it gets. Other than that, you know, New York. It's already done. That's checked off the list. You know, uh, so yeah. Honestly, yeah. I, and then you know what? Honestly, Arizona. I want the UFC to come back. I want a full turnaround. Let's fight in Arizona. Why don't Why don't we get Josie Auto back in Arizona? Yeah, that sounds good. How about that? But, I mean, that's asking a whole lot. That's kind of disrespectful to that man. I don't know what I'm talking about. Marcus Rea. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the win. Really, really fun fight. Uh, the broadcast, you know, talking about the third, they kept talk, you know, going off saying that Martinez was blowing it, that him clinching you, that if he kicked your legs a couple more times, that the fight was going to be over. I mean, I'm assuming you disagree with that. I do not disagree with that. If he would have landed another couple of good kicks, yeah, he probably could have gotten that. I'm not lying. You know, like, man, I had to tough it out. You People don't understand, like, you know, taking leg kicks like that, especially against a guy like that, you know, you don't have a choice. You know, once your leg breaks down, we're all human beings. Our bodies function the same way. It doesn't matter how tough you are. And I feel like my toughness is what kept me in there. But it doesn't matter how tough you are. Once that nerve is, is damaged and once that leg is damaged, you can't stand on it. You can't stand, you can't fight, you know? And that's just true. So, yeah, but I, I think that they're right about that. But I think I was making the right adjustments that made it hard for him to find that. And he had to keep on searching. He had to keep on uh, putting himself out of position to try to land that kick, which that's why he was getting caught with hard, with hard shots. And I think he knew that. So he just... Uh, I needed to make an adjustment too, you know, and that he felt that the adjustment he needed was to clinch with me. Um, I think that he should have just done more with the clinch, if anything. If he was going to clinch with me, we needed to actually get into a wrestling scramble, get me to the mat, do some damage, that type of thing, you know. But I don't necessarily think it was a bad decision. He just needed to do more with it. So your journey to the UFC, you kind of took an unconventional road. I mean, you got to the UFC, as you mentioned, you're, you're an older guy. You know, when you come in in your 30s, you don't get the lot of hype that other people did. You've made that hype the hard way, getting in the cage and beating really good guys and having great performances. Just talk me through that. You, you, you know, why was it so different for you compared to everybody else? Yeah, you know, again, again, God has a plan for everybody's life. And, you know, it just so happens that his plan for my life is trials and tribulations and grit, you know, and uh, I accept his will, you know, and uh, I, I'm joyful in that, you know, and I'm thankful for that. So if this is what my path is, is where I have to grind and claw for every bit of respect that I get, then I'll stand in that joyfully, you know, uh, with his honor, with, with his armor all on. So it is a... Uh, it is kind of crazy to think that's how it's been, but I, uh, that's fine with me, you know? Like, my life has been that, you know? Um, being the father that I am, being the husband that I am, being the community member I am, it's always been a grind. It's always been tough. It's always been um, pulling it out of the gutter. So why change it now, you know? Uh, and I think that the average person is going to learn to respect and appreciate that because life is hard. Life is not all glittery all the time. And to smile through these things and to um, come in with the attitude of gratitude, uh, even in the face of all the uh, opposition, is a, is, a, is a skill that most people will never have. Uh, and my last question, uh, a lot of times people will talk about who they want to fight next, they'll talk about where they want to fight next, but they don't talk about enough like how they want to be on the card. You know, you're right now, you're on the, uh, the top prelim fight for huge pay-per-view. That's a big spot. But, I mean, I'm assuming you want even bigger next time, maybe on the pay-per-view or, or maybe a fight night main event or something like that. Is that something you might, you know, when the matchmakers call you, kind of throw some suggestions like that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, obviously, that'd be cool, too, to be on the main card, you know, jump on the main card after this. I feel like that's the next step. Um, but, again, feature prelims cool with me. That's the most watched fight almost always, right? So, like, I'm down with that. You know, I just like to fight. Um, I like to come out here. I like to perform. Um, and, you know, the, the thing about that, not to get into the money talk, but, you know, major, main event or getting on the main card, and sim, you get paid the same, you know? So it's like more so it's just like I just want to fight great fighters, um, challenge myself, uh, and, uh, you know, keep going out here and getting these wins. So it would be awesome to step into uh, not a main event because I'm not trying to do five yet, you know? Even though I feel like I'm, I can go five, I ain't trying to do five just yet, you know? Uh, we're gonna wait till I get a, get some more in the bank to get to get to that. But uh, I would definitely like to be on a main card. That'd be sick. Marcus. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, Marcus, you and your wife have four children. 
You're a fighter. She's a teacher. Walk me through an average day in the McGee household. Uh, it's pretty normal, actually. We live a little pretty normal life. Uh, wake up at six o'clock. Both of us wake up at six o'clock. Basically, I'm getting my tea ready, getting my, you know, making my breakfast for the morning. They get up. Uh, she gets up with my two youngest and gets them ready to go to school. Uh, kiss them goodbye. Tell them I love them. You know, they take off. Uh, and then I head off to training. And my two my two youngest are in the same. My two oldest are in high school, so. They go to high school, you know, do their thing, and then we come back home. We usually hang out all night, you know, after I get done training because they usually get home right around 5 o'clock. I get off training around 4.45. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, so I get to spend nights with them. Um, I, every night I'm back home. Watch, my wife watches TV for the most part. I hang out and just walk back and forth in the house for the most part. <laughs> uh, so we're pretty chill, pretty chill. You know, it's nothing too crazy. Uh, pretty, pretty relaxed family life. You know, just spending time with each other regularly. Tell you what, we laugh a lot, we joke a lot, uh, and there's a lot of love. I love that man. And one more from me. Your teammate Mario Bautista. He got a lot of flack for his performance against Jose Aldo. Did you give him any advice, and did you have any conversations with him after the fight? Yeah, we actually, we talked about it, you know, but nothing crazy. You know, a fight's a fight, and, you know, he did what he needed to do to win. And unfortunately, you know, it's not always beautiful. Like, again, like, uh, I'm, I'm happy that I got the win against Jonathan Martinez, but would I say it's my favorite performance I've ever had? Absolutely not. You know, I wish I could have done more, uh, and I, I'm, I'm happy that he's safe and that he's healthy and that he gets to go back to his family uh, uh, safe and well as well. But that being said, you know, we want to go out and we want to perform and we want to become stars and all this extra stuff, that, you know, all the all these things. Um, but it's a fist fight, you know, and people don't understand. Like, we don't – it's so hard to go out there and to make performances against the top guys in the world. Uh, and these guys want it just as bad as you do. These guys train just as hard as you do. These guys have great coaches as well. So you do what you can to win because our checks are on the line, you know. Like, and he – a check was on the line for him, double the money or half the money. Who, what other jobs like that, you know? So he did what he needed to do to win, and I ride with my guys anyways, you know? I ride with my guys, and he's going to show up his next fight, and he's going to silence all that anyways. When he looks great his next fight, they'll forget about the fact that they had an issue with how he won the fight against Jose Aldo. It's Jose Aldo. What are you going to do? Like, this guy's a goat. What, you win. You do what you can to win, you know? Hey, Marcus. So you'll you'll assumedly be a ranked fighter in a weight class like bantamweight. That's a very big deal. How much does that inevitable ranking next to your name mean to you? You know, it means a lot. But even then, I, I, I said it before this, like the fruit of the labor was not the ranking, right? The fruit of the labor was walking through the path to get to this point, right? Like putting in all the hours and then accepting the fight like this and then showing up with gratitude and attitude and, and, and then stepping in the cage and doing what I did, you know, it's like all of those things. And then the so the... So the number is just like the cherry on top, you know, but there's so many layers that are below that that are like that every other that all the crowd is missing out there. You know, all the layers of blood, sweat and tears that each one of these coaches have put in times I've kicked their legs. Their legs are beat up right now, too. You know, I'm sure busted lips, you know, like they they pour into me as well. And like, you know, growing shots on accident, <laughs> you know, so. Um, there's so much of that. So for me to overshadow that with a number, it's just like I feel like arrogant, you know what I'm saying? So do I appreciate it? Absolutely. But uh, the fruit and the labor is in all the things that I've been able to build outside of the cage. How crazy is it to look back on the fact that you started off as an 0-2 amateur? Absolutely nuts, right? Honestly, absolutely nuts. Like, what is that? What is that? That's crazy. And you, I don't, Man, you... I, who could have wrote this story, right? Who could have wrote this story, you know? I give it all to God. Like, you know, I give it all to God. I'm not even sure you could have wrote it that good. I know I didn't. I My story was not anywhere near. It would have been way worse than this story, you know? So um, I'm absolutely uh, just grateful. Grateful, and I'm a, I plan to stay inside of that type of mentality and keep moving forward, you know? And last one for me. A lot of the top 15 bantamweights right now are at the MMA lab. You, Mario, Kyler, Sean O'Malley. Is there any chance you'd fight those guys, or you guys all kind of have an agreement to stay away from each other? When none of us have that agreement to stay away from each other. But that being said, you know, we're only fighting for a championship belt, you know? Like, there's not, like, do we want to fight each other? Hell no, right? No, we don't want to fight each other. I don't want to fight any of them, you know? But... You, I mean, we, we get asked that question so much, and it's so funny, because when you look at the list, we'd have to beat Corey Sanhagen, Marab, we'd have to beat Peter Yan, Song Yadong, you know, Rob Font, like, yo, 
like there has to so much has to happen for us to have that happen you know so like i understand everybody bringing it up but yo we are we we're human beings too we got a lot of work to do before we even get into those type of conversations so no do i want to find my teammates absolutely not um but if there's a team that could do it with respect and with honor and and and, and um humility i believe we absolutely can you know we would separate it from what everybody else has made it into this big grudge thing and all this other stuff and we could do it professionally you know um that being said no i don't want to fight none of them and they don't want to fight me Marcus, just one more on the front because like you said we've asked you guys that a lot like i spoke to kyler about it i spoke to mario about it and they've all said the same thing like we don't have a problem fighting but we're just not seeking it um but then you have guys like Aljo and Marab, and obviously famously Kane and DC. They're like flat no, never, even for the title. I guess what's different about you guys that you guys obviously have been like you guys basically all start at the same time, and you're all in the UFC. So why are you guys different from those other guys that just flat out refuse even just for the belt? Because like it's a fight, right? And this is what we do. So it's like feelings. Like, uh, we love each other, you know what I'm saying? This real brotherly love there. Like, we've poured into each other. So win, lose, or draw with each other, we're both getting paid to fight for a world title and set our families up for a whole different type of... I mean, come on, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, to, we, people make too much of it, you know what I'm saying? What is it if we go fight for 25 minutes? We fight every... You know how many rounds Mario gave me for this freaking camp? You know what I'm saying? Like, That's what Kyler says. You basically fight for a bell in camp. Might as well get paid. A hundred percent. Me and Kyler, yo, I was there for his whole... Like, we do this, you know what I'm saying? And honestly, I feel like the crowd wouldn't even really want it, you know? we. I feel... I said this to somebody else. I think we could... I could fight... If me and Kyler fought each other, I think we could do all of our cage rounds, the whole camp together. <laughs> Just... It, <laughs> you know, do every cage round together, the whole camp, and then still go out and fight each other, you know? And it's like, so what if he beats me? Like, it's my brother, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, so what if I beat him? It's my brother. We're going to make tons of money together and set our families up for glory and, and, and honestly, for the, and set our community up for glory. Come on, man. You know, like, we're not looking at it like anything crazy. I think these people look at it for, like, the wrong reasons, and I think we look at it for what it is, you know? We love each other. We don't want to fight each other. Uh, we look to never fight each other. But if we absolutely had to, why are we getting so egotistical about it? It's a fist fight, you know? Like, so what? We fist fight. We fist fight each other anyways. Mario tried to put it on me this camp. <laughs> yeah, he got me ready for this thing, so it wouldn't be any different. Uh, one more here. Marcus McGee, uh, Randy Stunky from the MMA Lab. I heard you're going to spoil your family when you get home. Where do you plan on taking your wife? <laughs> I absolutely plan on uh, spoiling my family. First things first, the Zach Bryan concert. Uh, my wife, for sure. She deserves it. She loves country, and Zach Bryan's coming out. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and spoil her and take her there for sure. Uh, and then, yeah, the kids, too. we got to go out and spoil them. They've done so much for me and just rode with me this whole year. So super proud to have them, and uh, I want to give back to them. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys.